I sold my seven year old camera on eBay within a day of listing it. And before I tell you how I did that, you have to know that it wasn't always like this. Usually when I post items on eBay, I would have to wait for weeks without any buyers and then finally the listing gets expired. This was totally frustrating because of two reasons. The items, they were in a reasonably good condition and a lot of effort was going into taking photos and listing it online. But when it came to selling this camera, I decided to try something different. This was also the first camera I ever bought. So there was also an emotional side to it. I just didn't want this camera to end up having the same fate just being totally ignored and unwanted. So I researched online, came up with a strategy, posted the ad, and then suddenly everything changed. I've documented the whole process, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through each and every step I took. This strategy consists of five steps, but trust me, it's not that complicated, and you can do everything within 10 to 15 minutes. The first thing that decides how fast you can sell something is where you sell it. If we try selling an iPhone in a fish market, there won't be many takers. By listing our product in the right platform, we increase the probability of it getting sold faster. There are around 8 billion people worldwide and not everyone is interested in a used iPhone. So it's very important that we show our product to the right audience. And being on the right platform helps us to narrow down this buyer pool. If it's something bulky like a dining table, then it's better to sell it on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace because these platforms focus on the local neighborhood. For clothes, platforms like Poshmark or Mercari are the best and eBay can be used as a common marketplace for all kinds of products. I listed my camera on eBay Kleinanzeige which is a German version of eBay's flea market app. But don't worry, the strategies and tips that I'm going to tell you now are valid irrespective of your chosen platform. But there will be thousands of used cameras on these platforms. How can I get the attention of buyer on mine? The key here is in the keywords. If people can't find our item, they won't buy it. Doesn't matter which platform we use. So we have to make sure that our item is always listed first in the search results. And the secret to it is using the right keywords. Keywords are those words and phrases that people type into a search engine to find what they are looking for. Just think of them like fishing hooks in the water. The more hooks you have in the water, the more chances of catching the fish. And the more specific you can describe your product using the right keywords, the more chances of it appearing in the search results. Take a moment to put yourself in your customer's shoes and then think what words you are likely to enter in a search engine when looking for this item. Always include information such as the brand, the style, the size, the color, and the material in the title. If we have an IKEA sofa, we could write the title as beautiful small old couch. But then if someone searches for an IKEA sofa, our listing will not turn up. A better title in this case would be IKEA Landskrona Scandinavian three-seater leather sofa. I know, a bit long, but this works. The key to selling any item faster is using the right keywords. So when it came to writing a title for my camera, I went as detailed as possible. The company is Panasonic, the model is Lumix DMS LX100, the style is retro, and the color is brown and white. I know that most of us would write at least some title for the listing, but 75% of the sellers make the mistake of skipping the next step, and that makes a huge difference in getting the item sold. We should write a detailed description in a clear and easy to read format. This will help the customer to have a better understanding of what we are offering. Here is some information which you can include. The age and the current condition of the item, whether it has some scratches or if it is damaged. The dimension and weight, especially if it is a large item. The metric system was introduced as early as the late 19th century. So use it instead of saying too big to fit in my car. The type of material if that information is relevant. If you are selling many items as a bundle, then specify what are all included. For example, write if the charger will come along with the phone. And then finally, any other information that can be useful to the buyer and reduces your effort. For example, if the item is heavy and you live on the 15th floor without a lift, mentioning it would be a good idea. Whatever you write, better don't lie. Be honest in your description and let the people know what they will get and make sure to keep out irrelevant information. The buyer doesn't have to know that the phone was a birthday gift from your ex-girlfriend. 
Finally, it's always a good practice to include a disclaimer about wear and tear. Unfortunately, there are some people who have unrealistic expectations about used items. But like most sellers don't bother to write a description, most buyers don't bother to read one until we get this next step right. People shop with the eyes first. They usually scan through the listings quickly and our goal as a seller is to make them pause at our listing. And for that, include high quality original photos of a product along with the listing. And taking eye-catching photos is really easy. We don't need any fancy cameras. Just our phone and some good lighting can make all the difference. Place the item on a clean surface with a neutral background and plenty of light, such as near a window. Take photos from multiple angles. If the device has any scratches, then make sure to get an image that shows this. It's also a good practice to include an image that can give the buyer an idea about the sizing. But even if you manage to grab the buyer's attention, there is no guarantee that they will go through with the purchase. To close a deal, we need to understand the main reason why people use such online flea market apps and then use that info to our advantage. If we are looking to get rid of an item fast, we cannot really charge more than someone else is charging for the same item. For example, we searched for a used iPhone and found a listing for 299 euros. Just below that, we found another one with a similar spec for 295 euros. Which one would you buy? The cheaper one, right? That's what everyone else would do too. But suppose if the second item was priced at 99 euros, then we would get suspicious and we might not buy it. If we price our item too low, then people might wonder if it is too good to be true. So we have to find that sweet spot for our asking price that's not too high and not too low. But how do we do that? Luckily, there is an easy way. First, search for the item that we are going to sell on eBay. Now we will see a list of similar items for sale. But the thing to note is that the price we see here is the asking price, not the price people are willing to pay. To know the ideal price, we need to turn on the sold list feature to show the price at which the item was last sold. From here, find the maximum and minimum price and then set the price of our item at around or above the mid range. Another advantage of doing this research is that sometimes we realize that there is not much profit to make when we sell. So if it takes 30 minutes to list an ad for a $1 pen, then it's probably not worth investing your time. Always have respect for your time more than for money. I hope this video was helpful. The time has come now to say goodbye to all those unwanted items lying around collecting dust. If you are interested in more content about earning, saving and spending money, then do subscribe to the channel. Until I see you again, adios.